Myra and I'm a volunteer in St. Francis in Blanchardstown and I do inpatient hospitality. How long have you been doing this for? I have been a volunteer nearly three years. Uh, First I was a driver um, and then when the inpatient unit opened I started here in October of 2014. But altogether, um, I've been nearly three years a volunteer. Um, inpatient hospitality means that we come in and what we do is we check the water jugs and fill them up if they need refilling, um, offer tea, coffee to the patients and if they need somebody to sit with them or just to you know, have a little chat or, you know, if it's a fine evening, possibly bring them out into the garden for a walk around. Um, Just very nice things to do, really. Yeah. What made you decide to volunteer? Well, I um, took redundancy from my job and I said I wanted to do something and I wanted to be able to give something back to the community and the hospice was opening only for daycare so I got in touch and um, said I'd like to help out and they you know took me on which I'm very grateful for and uh, so I became a driver for daycare patients and that was one day a week on a Friday it was only open two days a Thursday and a Friday Um, so I did a Friday and uh, thoroughly enjoyed that. And then when the inpatient unit was opening, um, the volunteer coordinator, Brenda, contacted me and asked me if I'd be interested in a position inpatient, and I jumped at the chance. Yeah, so I love it. Absolutely love it. Have you had any surprises? (sighs) Surprises? Um, I'm surprised when, you know, people tell you that you know they really appreciate what you do and that you know they're very thankful um and that you know you're doing a great job and you, because you know you don't do it for that you know and it's a surprise when somebody actually you know says thank you not because you have been expecting thanks but because they actually said it if that makes sense have you learned anything about yourself? Um, probably that, you know, I'm probably stronger than I realised I was. And that um, you know, people actually enjoy my company. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, just, yeah, just, uh, yeah. It brings out the best of me. I think. Have you learned anything about other people? Um, learned that people are generally all the same. You know, we all have the same, you know, complaints and we all have, you know, the same highs and lows and just that people are generally lovely, you know, and when they're in a position, you know, that they are in, in the hospice, they're just so so at ease and at peace with themselves that it makes what you're doing, you know, so worthwhile that um, it's, it's lovely to be able to do it. Have you found anything that was too difficult for you? Um, no, no, not as, as yet. Um, I was on duty one night, one particular night, when um, a lady passed and she had been with us you know, for quite some time. And I did actually have to take a moment um, to compose myself. Um, But that that was tough because you've gotten to know um, the patient as well as the extended family. Um, But other than that, no, because you know coming into this that it's the nature of the hospice that people are going to come in I mean not everybody passes away people do go home some people just come in for you know pain management and um, to have their meds regulated so it's lovely you know when you come in one week and you say where's 
oh, they've gone home, you know, and it does happen, you know. What's the bit that you enjoy the most? I enjoy (laughs) socialising. I enjoy talking to the patients. I enjoy spending time with them. I enjoy hearing their stories, Um, you know. Sometimes, you know, I talk about me, you know, they like to hear things about me too so it's that aspect of you know it's it's on a personal level and you do get to know them you probably get to know them maybe a little bit more than than you would when you're in a a driving capacity because um you have more time with them you know when you when you're in here um probably a little bit longer so um but yeah, it's it's that getting to know people and you know hearing their stories and you know getting to know what everybody likes, whether somebody likes ice under water or they don't like ice and water, you know what way they like their tea, you know it's all those little things that seem totally insignificant. Can you tell me the story about maybe the incident that happened with the hot chocolate? Right. Okay. Last week when I came on duty, there was a, a new lady. And when I went into her and offered her a cup of tea, um, she said, no, she was going to have some hot chocolate. And I took that meant that a visitor was coming in with hot chocolate for her. So um, as I'm going about then, one of the care um, assistants came to me and said, do we have any hot chocolate in the kitchen? And I said, no, I said, we don't. And I said, is it for the new lady and she said yes it is so I said okay Um, then one of the nurses came to me shortly after and said do you have any hot chocolate and I said no I said we don't but um, it was decided that they would try and open the restaurant downstairs to see if there was any hot chocolate and there wasn't so I offered I said look I only live two minutes drive away from the hospice here and I know I have hot chocolate at home and I can be up and back in five minutes and that's exactly what I did so I I left the hospice rang my husband on the way and said meet me at the door have the hot chocolate I need it for a patient came back down made the hot chocolate for the lady and she was very very pleased and I actually left the tin of hot chocolate with her and said if you need it in the future if you you know just ask somebody to make your hot chocolate it's there for you so it's you know those little things you know that they may not mean a lot to some people but I'm sure it meant something to her because she was looking forward to her hot chocolate you know what kind of impact has this volunteering work had on the rest of your life or has it had any impact Yes, it has, um, because when I started here, you know, shortly after I, you know, became a volunteer, I actually had two bereavements very quickly together, in, you know, and I have to say that the hospice were so good to me, uh, Brenda especially, they, they were so supportive. They helped me through it. They gave me time to grieve. And then, you know, when I was ready, I was able to come back. Um, and it has actually made me, you know, think that I can actually help others. I feel that it has made me um, a stronger person and to be able to be there for other people. And that I'd like to be, you know, maybe even go a little bit further with it, you know, and maybe a bit further down the line, maybe go into some kind of bereavement counselling. I feel it has given me the strength to be able to do that. But when the time is right, you know, and the opportunities arise, yeah, I think I'd be looking at something like that. If anybody is thinking about becoming a volunteer, you know, just don't hesitate. Just go ahead and do it because I feel that personally that I'm cheating the people in the hospice because I feel I actually take more than I actually give, you know, that I get more from it um, because it's just totally rewarding. You know, on a personal level, it's just, yeah, it's something I look forward to every Tuesday night, you know, coming in and 
you know, just being here. It gives you just a total sense of reality and peace. 